Hey guys, welcome to the most affordable phone from Google. So much has already been said about the Pixel 6a. Most reviews I've seen about it are mixed, with the biggest criticisms about it being that there are so many alternatives available in the market right now that are so competitive in terms of specs and features that it's not easy to justify going for a product with a 1080p 60Hz display, no wireless charging, and 12 megapixel rear cameras. Not that it doesn't take great pictures and videos, because of that, the Sony Xperia 1 Mark IV, which is a pretty high-end device, also has 12 megapixel sensors. But it has proven that with the right color signs, the right technology, it is possible to take fantastic pictures and videos even with 12 megapixels. And so far, pictures shot with the 6A looks quite decent. Like most phones right now, the focus here is that you can have zero knowledge about photography and still get sharp, vibrant images, even exposure across the frame, a night mode that lets you take clean pictures even when shooting in low light. And since it's got Google's flagship Tensor chip, the camera is very fast and responsive. The videos, this shoots up to 4K 60 frames per second with decent stabilization and microphone pickup as you're about to see. All right, I'm outside, I'm shooting. I hope the microphone's picking up my voice well. Okay, so pay attention to the stabilization. See if it's any good. It seems to be pretty good so far. Very little, if any, shakiness. I'm just going to walk over there and do a pan shot of the river, okay? Alright, let's pan. Seems a bit jittery, but that's pretty typical for a phone camera. One thing I'm noticing is that the sky is always very well exposed. Yeah, so overall, a pretty decent video camera. Not the most natural picture. I think the colors are a little too, I would say, uh, exaggerated. Like it appears to be a little more yellow than what I'm actually seeing with my eyes. But overall, it's pretty decent. Back to the video. Not the best looking pictures and video. There's still some room for improvement in terms of color accuracy because it does tend to overcompensate the yellows just a little bit. I'm also not very happy with the over sharpening, but I think it's something that most phone cameras tend to do. So in my book, it's still not a deal breaker. Still pretty satisfied with the results given that this is a budget device. By the way, I haven't really seen anyone talk about the audio aspect of this device. So here I am, an audio geek, adding my voice to the conversation. It seems that there are some missed opportunities here. The fact that Google removed the headphone jack isn't such a big deal for me. I mean, you can still get a Type-C to 3.5mm converter, the one I'm using here is a cheap one from Apple, or you can always go for wireless audio. The 6A is using the CS35L41 audio amplifier by Sirius Logic. Nothing special, just a very common amplifier that we see in phones nowadays, even in high-end ones like the S22+. Plus. In terms of sound quality when wired, it does sound about as good as the higher-end smartphones. When I compared it to the Samsung S22 Plus side by side, in some ways, it even sounds better. It does sound more lean, more clean, 
and a little less bloaty in the bass frequencies than the Samsung. Not bad at all in my book. Speakers are pretty loud, not the loudest I've heard on a phone, nor does it have much stereo separation or spread, but it's still quite acceptable. The next generation of the good old SBC audio codec called LC3. Now, this new codec promises higher fidelity audio over SBC, but it's just that there isn't much you can do with the sound quality you're getting. No Dolby Atmos, spatial audio, no graphic EQ, just some compressor settings, and a dial that lets you boost the bass and treble. And that, to me, is the biggest difference coming from high-end devices like the S22 Plus, the Xperia 1 Mark IV. Those devices provide the full treatment to satisfy anyone who likes spatial audio for movies or just want their sound to be in a specific way. On the Pixel 6a, there's not much you can do to get a better experience in terms of audio. Now, you can get apps like Wavelet, but the custom settings there aren't universal. It can only be used on specific apps like Spotify. So if I want custom sound, the best alternative for me is to use wireless audio gear that have their own tuning app. Or if you're more serious about audio and you need to drive higher impedance headphones, we're talking 50 ohms and above, you could simply use the 6A as a source and hook it up to a portable DAC. So overall, to me, I think the Pixel 6a is a decent device. I've got no major issues with it, even if some reviewers have brought up that the screen is not as smooth, even when compared against other 60Hz screens, let alone 120Hz. Fingerprint sensors, not as responsive. Yes, I agree, it takes a bit more time to unlock but those factors did not really impact my experience enough, at least not enough to be annoying. Well, probably the most annoying thing about this phone, at least for me, is its lack of wireless charging. Even my old iPhone SE has wireless charging. Even so, you should definitely look at this device if you want the pure stock Android experience, a great camera for the price, and you've seen the competition but you still don't mind that it's lacking in some areas. After all, a pixel's a pixel. Software updates are going to be direct from Google, so you're going to get them first. But I don't think it's a device that's going to win any hearts. Not from creators, gamers, definitely not audiophiles. I mean, the competition is too stiff, with more brands yanking flagship features down to the budget range. The Nothing Phone one is the latest example of that. I will be getting my hands on that device, so be sure to subscribe if you don't want to miss my review of the Nothing Phone one. And given what this 6A has, what it's capable of, it could look outdated pretty quickly. For this reason, if you're still bent on getting a Google device, it may actually be worth looking at the 6 and the 6 Pro instead. Because even if those devices are a little more expensive, at the least, they won't look as outdated a few years down the road as the Pixel 6a. Thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, smash like and share. Also, if you want to see more content from this channel, get subscribed and tap the bell button to stay notified whenever I release new videos. A big shout out to my Patreon supporters, as always. You can also join us on the world's most popular gaming chat app, Discord, if you want to hang out or chat. Link is in the box down below. Click here to watch my review of the Sony Xperia 1 Mark IV or watch another video from this channel.